Jalen Green, since becoming the number two overall pick in the 2021 NBA draft, has had a very up and down first two seasons. Despite averaging 17 points and 22 points his first two seasons, things weren't really clicking for Jalen Green. So much so where fellow 2021 classmate Alfred Sagoon was getting a ton of attention and deservedly so. However, since the All-Star break, Jalen Green has really turned it around and his efficiency has been incredible. He's always been a freak athlete, but the shot making has been flat out remarkable. Whereas since the All-Star break, he's shooting 38% on catch and shoot threes, 41% on pull up threes while shooting at around a 58% clip at the rim compared to his numbers at the All -Star, before the All-Star break. His efficiency has helped him become a rising star, which sounds a bit odd to say for a former number two overall pick that's already averaged 20 points per game in his career. And over his last 10 games, he's had 117 ball screen possessions, and he scored at a 1.04 point per possession rate on those possessions. If this was somehow sustainable for a full season, that would make Jalen Green a top 20 ball screen scorer in the league, up there with the likes of players such as Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie Irving, Derek White, who's had a phenomenal season, Jamal Murray, just to name a few. Jalen Green is very much so on his way to stardom and should most definitely be in the most approved player conversation due to his success post the All-Star break. Now let's dive into the film and see how Jalen Green was able to turn things around and ultimately spark a ridiculous run from the Rockets where they now have a shot to make the NBA play-in tournament. Welcome to the Sports Headline Show. If you guys are new, please make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe here to the channel for more great content and let's get into it. Obviously, the number one thing you're worried about with a guard like Jalen Green is his ability as a downhill driver. And when the Rockets go to their double drag set, we see the, the Blazers in a drop coverage here. And one of the things I like to teach my guards is when you're reading a ball screen, you want to read the big, what he's in, and what the help is doing on the strong side and the weak side. So, and how they're helping off. And based off this look, if I'm Jalen Green, we, are, we know we're going to some type of jumper here. And Chris Murray is in him. He's guarding him really, really effectively here, actually stops the drive. But Jalen Green's shiftiness as a ball handler is able to get to a snatch back, hits the pull-up three. This type of shot making is so important for Jalen Green's development. I love how Jalen Green fully maximizes the floor spacing at all times. Watch how he comes off this ball screen. He splits it, and then he pulls over the top of his head to get to a crafty finish. I've loved watching Jalen Green's finishing ability since the second half of the season, and this is why he's such a dynamic player, especially in the half court. Off to Oklahoma City and step in and rhythm. That's a tough move. That's the first move for Joe, and there goes Jalen. The Rockets go to a horns out ball screen set here for Jalen Green. Once he gets the ball screen, notice how Jalen Williams is way higher in the drop than in previous clips we've seen. He's in a high drop, worried about the potential pull-up mid-range jumper. He comes up higher. And just the degree of difficulty on this shot by Jalen Green with Lou Dort on his back. This is such a talented shot by Jalen Green and ultimately a big shot in this game. That is an incorrect score. Rocket second unit couldn't really get going in the first half. Let's see if they can do something here. This clip right here showcases why Jalen Green might have an argument for being one of the best athletes pound for pound in the NBA. So you got a step up screen here from Dylan Brooks and the Thunder are getting with an aggressive ball screen coverage here, either trying to blitz this or hedge this by putting two on the ball by hedging. You would be able to keep the matchup the same and let Giddy get back to Dylan Brooks blitzing, just trying to get the ball out of his hands. Either way, it does not work. Jalen Green is able to split the two defenders, and I slow this clip down so we can appreciate it. Look how high he is in the air, the hang time on this play, be able to finish through contact, get the and one. This is just ridiculously impressive by Jalen Green, who, like I said, is pound for pound, one of the best athletes in the NBA. Thunder fan, I promise you this is my last time bringing up this game, but this is very, very late in overtime. And Jalen Green really does go berserk here in this fourth quarter in overtime period. So the Rockets go back to their ball screen action with Jalen Green and with Dylan Brooks. And Josh Giddy aggressively tries to switch out here and stop the ball. But that leaves Jalen Green a gap in the middle to split it. And there is very little help immediately off of this for Jalen Green. So he knows I'm going to be able to split this ball screen. And the help does try to come over and stop him. But just the variety of finishes that Jalen Green can get to 
freak athlete, freak player, and this is, again, a great play for Jalen Green. So this next series that we're going to talk about here is how the Rockets were able to get the same set off three straight times to Jalen Green, and we're going to call this action Zipper Pin. Now let's go to the whiteboard and draw this up and see how this is supposed to work. All right, so we get this zipper screen from Jabari Smith for Amon Thompson, who receives the entry pass from Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet clears over the top, sets the pin screen for Jalen Green, who gets the dribble handoff, and he either has a, a downhill lane to attack or he gets to shoot the shot right there. And we see in this possession that Jalen Green gets it after the pin down screen from Fred Van Vliet. He gets it, and he gets a full downhill driving lane, and he's able to pull over the top and get the easy layup. Same action a minute later, and again, you have Amon Thompson clearing out to the top of the key. You have Fred Van Vliet going over the top to set the pin down for Jalen Green. John Collins isn't really able to guard here, and Jalen Green is able to just go right by him for the scoop layup. Emi Udoka is such a smart play caller, recognizes that this action worked two straight times, so why not run it a third time? But watch how this time, John Collins is way higher up here off this dribble handoff, not wanting to give Jalen Green a free downhill driving lane, but Jalen Green is able to just come right into this with rhythm and knock down the pull-up three. Jalen Green, when he's rolling and the shot's falling, he is a dangerous offensive player. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this film breakdown on Jalen Green and how he's turned into a rising star. If you guys are new, please make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button and subscribe here to the Sports Headline Show's YouTube channel so you never miss a video. We have a bunch of great content on the way. I have my first personal mock draft for this 2024 draft cycle coming out this week. As long as great X's and O's content and coverage, especially as we get towards the playoffs. So you guys are going to make sure you subscribe here to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, everybody, stay safe and have a good one. Peace out.